All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the applications for the Chum Q form, the second form. Chum Q means seeking the bridge, and the bridge is the forearm. And we call that the bridge because that's what I have to cross to get to you, and that's what you have to cross to get to me. Now, in the beginning of the form, we start out exactly as pseudum tau form starts. Hoi six section is the same. Sub chi sao, quen sao, that's all the same. That is so that you can link the forms together. Later on, you're going to leave off the end of pseudum tau and the beginning of chum q and do them together as one long form. So the first movement that is really any different than pseudum tau is the first punch. Cha mai yachi chunkin, or stance pivot with the straight character sun punch. Now, what I do, it's very important that you understand the very first movement because it teaches you the cue or the secret to pivoting. What happens is I have the same stance that I had in Siudim Tao. That means my heels are out wider than my shoulders, my knees are bent, and I can't see my feet. So when I go into that first movement, what happens is I actually pivot that foot so that it matches the angle of the other foot. See? What I don't want to do is pivot on the ball of my foot, which would make my stance shallow and make me lean back and my whole stance would be off balance. So from position, the very first movement is to turn that foot and keep it bent in the same way as before so that you can't see your front foot. In other words, my foot maintains the same bend and alignment. The only thing that, that's any different is it pivots out on the heel, and that adds pivoting power to the punch. Now this introduces us to what's called trauma, or sitting horse, pivoting stance. What I do with the trauma is turn, and I want my toes to move as fast as possible. I turn my feet to the same angle as each other, which is based on the yi ji kim yang ma, or the basic stance. So I pivot and get power through my waist, through my hips, and into my movement. So in this case, it's a punch. Now at Siu Tao level, you just punched with the arm using your wrist, elbow, and shoulder alone. In Chum Q, you're learning to take and add body power to that punch. Now we use the trauma in a lot of drills. For example, what we call Kun Chu Kun, or fist parries fist. When Gavin goes to pivot punch me, I pivot punch to stop his. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and like that. We use pivot punch in a lot of the other drills as well. Like for example, in the lap cell cycle, here we're using the pivot punch in what I call the Buse up switch. Here, pivot punch, pivot punch. And then we're cycling again. So what I did was I went view through, pivot punch, pivot punch, and then again, cycling. All right, next I'm going to talk about after I finish the second punch and pull back. That footwork is called Jing Ma. It means to straighten the stance. We use it to mean to turn the stance back to the center from the side. Now, normally we think of our fighting position as being turned sideways to the opponent. This pivoting of the stance introduced us to that. But there are times when you would use Yi Ji Kim Yang Ma in a fighting situation. It's just not used the way you might think at first. Now, for example, if I were open with Gavin and I had thrown the rear punch at him and he blocked it with Wu Sao, in a situation like this, I might not want to do a complete pivot of my stance because if I did, I'd be turning my back to my opponent. We wouldn't really want to do that. So in a situation like that, that's where you might want to use your Jing Ma, because you would then get a little bit of pivoting power, but you wouldn't turn your back on the opponent. So what you're getting is you're getting the ability to get some torque, but without the risk of turning your back. So I use it in a situation like that. Now, in sticky hands, I sometimes use Jing Ma to get back to the center. Um, so, so again, I won't give it my back. For example, if I used Bu here, and then came in with a punch like that, in a situation here, I wouldn't necessarily want to turn completely because it'd give my back to the opponent. See, instead of turning completely, what I might want to do here is just turn part of the way to get power, but not enough to give him my back. So that's one of the other ways we would use it. Now, in a lot of the drills, we use Jing Ma to help straighten it back or to get it back into the basic drill. Example is when we're using, say for example, in sticky hands, and I want to put the lap sao changes into the roll. Say, for example, I was putting in Chang Dai Jam, and I want to take it back to the roll. We both use Jing Ma to get back in. Or if I was using Busa switch here, and I want to go back to the roll, I could do it that way. If I wanted to go Gum Sao switch, and again, if I want to take it back to the roll, there it is. All right, next I'm going to talk about Biu Jong Sao, or the thrusting guard. Now, what I normally use this for is to create timing, or to use 
it, use it as what we call munza or asking hand. In other words, creating bridge contact when there is none. Now, when I'm faced with my opponent here in this situation, I might not want to just step in and hit because I really don't know what he's going to do. And I might not really want to open myself up to a possible counterattack without getting some kind of response or at least some idea of what he's up to. So what I use this for is, is in asking him, I, I'll pull my arm forward to find out what I'm going to feel from him. Is he going to move? Is he going to run? Is he going to grab? What's he going to do? So I create bridge contact with Yu Jong Sao as an asking hand. Now, once I've created that bridge contact, I might go into a number of movements. For example, situation like that, what I did was ask, and when I felt his arm stiffen up, I knew it was okay to jerk him into the punch. Then I just followed up with, you know, whatever other movement I felt like doing. Now, I can use Bu Jong Sao as a block. Um, if we were close and that jab came, I could use that to exclude his arm out, then go from there. Um, if we were open and that straight punch came in, I could use it there to just shoot straight inside that punch. So again, here, and that would open him out. Now, this is one of the reasons why my hand is turned out. See, the Bu Sao that I showed at Su Lim Tao level is fine against this arm. It pushes him out. But if I use Bu Sao against that arm, it doesn't necessarily push him fully outwards. So by flipping my hand over, it just gives me that little bit of extra um, forcing outwards of his hand. All right, another way I would like to use the Bu Jong Sao motion is against the shove. Sometimes fights start with a guy shoving you. So when Gavin shoves me, what I do is intercept that shove with the Bu Jong Sao. Now, as his weight is coming forward, I push him out. This doesn't really stop him. He's still coming towards me. Then I just catch him and hit him with the headbutt. And I just finished up with whatever other movement. But the main idea was catching that thing in between and, in a way, borrowing his power, letting him fall into that headbutt. All right, next I'm going to talk about Pai Jan, which is the hacking elbow movement. Now, there's actually two elbows hidden in this movement, but we'll just talk about the one that's moving forward for right now. Now, first of all, just the action of pivoting with these elbows in this position gives you a sort of a level gauge and a squareness gauge for your pivoting. In other words, I do a full pivot until my shoulders are square to that wall, and a full pivot through until my shoulders are square to this wall. It tells me you know, if I'm leaning too far forward or back, side or side, it sort of like keeps you level and square and straight and shows you that you can turn your body 180 degrees when your feet only turn 90 degrees. Now besides that pivoting, you also get the application for the elbow. Now Pai Jan, or hacking elbow, is used in a number of ways. If I get a hold of this hand, I can use it there or here. Against that hand, there or here. You know, in sticky hands, sometimes I'll use that elbow right there and come across with that. Now say we were closed. If I had attacked Gavin with pop down and he stopped me here, after having hit the body there, wham, I can use my elbow attack to the body in that way. Okay, now also within that movement is the backward cutting elbow, which I use in a number of ways. Now, using the two elbows combined together in sticky hands, after having come in with that first pie jam here, I use the second one to go through again and then come into here. Um, I can use that backward cutting elbow. If Gavin was throwing a hook at my head, I could use that elbow to stop that shot too. So I'll use it in that way. Um, another way I like to use the elbow, um, when we're open, if Gavin punches here, I can get in real close and cut backwards with that elbow in this way. Or for that matter, I could have come in close here and used it as a throw, cutting backwards. All right, next I'm going to talk about Xiong Fun Sub, or double chopping hand. Actually, Fun means to chop into powder in Chinese, or to separate. So this is chopping hand. Now, one of the ways I like to use Fun Sub would be in sticky hands. I like to go from the low foot cell to trap into the chop. So what I did was, from position here, is roll into that grab chop and then go in here. Now I like to go into the chop from a number of different blocks. Say you open the jab comes, I like to go into the chop there and again the retrap. So what I did is just block down the line, grab chop, retrap. Um, I go into a chop, say for example he punched and then blocked my chop. I can run into that second chop which I talked about in the Su Lin Tao tape. So that's another one of the ways I go into the Fun Sao. There's lots of different ways. Um, say, for example, the first punch came, and I did Bong, and the second one came, I could go Pak and go into the Fun Sao there. Now I can use Fun Sao to the body in a situation like that, too. I could go Pak here, Pak that one, and attack to the body there, or again down here. So I can use Fun Sao in a number of different ways. I normally like to chop at the Adam's apple when possible. The other one I use Palm Up. See, I don't like to chop the side of the neck as much, 
But in following the form, in the form I go here and then sink like that. Well, if I wanted to follow the exact movement from the form, I could, for example, after having chopped here, bring that hand down and go here. So that follows the sequence from the form because it was chop, elbow. And again, here it was chop, elbow. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to talk about, a little bit more about chum jan, or sinking elbow. So from position, I twist my hand and drop and bend the elbow. So it looks like tan sao, but actually the focus is on the elbow. Now, as I showed a minute ago, I showed how after having gone into a chop, you could then pull the person down into this, an elbow strike. But you can use the chum jang to block shots as well. Sometimes you leave your body open when you successfully hit someone. When he goes to hit you, you can use your elbow down to block. It's a quick way to pick off the punch. It also hurts his arm. Um, if you were side kicking me in the body, I can use my elbow there to block that kick. And that's also a painful way to stop the kick. So you just smack down on the leg. Um, another time I like to use the chum jang is, for example, when Gavin tries to lop and chop against me here, and his arm's got me trapped up. Another way I could use chum jack is to smack that arm and free my hand. So in a situation there, what I did was here, smack, and that freed my hand to come up with the shot. So these are all different ways that we might use that downward hacking elbow. Now another way I might use that chum jack straight after the chop, if I were trying to chop and Gavin ducked underneath it, that's the time you can use chum jang as well to catch him as he's going underneath. Because he's taking advantage of the fact that you're hyperextending or overextending so then you can just drop that down on him as he's going up and through. All right, next I'm going to talk about jeep so or bridge catching here. So you see that I snap towards in a circle, then I go pow with this hand and jut with the other. So I talked about this a little bit in Siudim Tao, but this is actually a Chung Q technique, a combination of jut and pow. It's used to hyperextend or break the opponent's arm. Now again, from open position, when he punches, once I've come in, if he tries to shoot again with that second punch, I can intercept it with the pow and the jut at the same time. So what I did was, I came in here, and then I chased backwards with jut as I lifted with that. So that's called jeep cell. Now closed, we can practice this in what I call an attack cycle, just a repeating set of movements. One of them I like to practice is, I go here with the tanda, then a jeep, and then I go here. Then I circle into the next one. So it goes like one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three. You can repeat that over and over to perfect your skill at intercepting with Jeepso. Okay, next I'm going to talk about Jing Jin. There are three of them here. And the first two are pulling in, protecting, while shooting the other one out. Now we normally use Jing Jin as a palm heel strike upward against someone who's taller than us, or at least the same level. You use it up higher. So for example, if we were closed, um, I would tend to use Jing Jin here to strike upwards, and you'd hit and actually lift with it. So anytime that you hit something above your level and then push up. I could either use it under the chin like that or right as you hit the face your hand would snap up and it adds that last minute lifting power. Now the third one, you pull one hand and you palm strike out. That could simulate attacking the person's elbow, pulling him into a bad alignment and then hitting the elbow. Like I talked about at Tsutum Tao, the, the South Sik when he was grabbing me. When I pulled him into that awkward alignment, that's the perfect time to use that, that type of a diagonal.